Greetings and peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching this from. Now, the uh, title of today's video will be The Yazidi Faith and its uh, similarity with Freemasonry. Now, I have been fascinated with the Yazidi Faith and uh, in the recent years, uh, due to their persecutions that they faced in uh, Iraq, uh, I wanted to extend uh, my reach to the Yazidi community as an olive branch from the Islamic community myself as a Muslim Mason, not just to teach them that I'm here to respect their faith, but also continue to bridge the gaps that I have been doing between the different communities. And uh, I believe the Yazidi also deserve that same respect. And uh, me getting a chance to tell the world who they are and what they believe in and to extend that olive branch because you know we're all walking each other home and we owe this love and respect to each other I didn't see anyone else doing it so it's my responsibility to take that mantle because the world we inherit inherited today is the one that we must pass on to future generations so um, I hope you enjoy what I have to offer and uh, I, I wish you all well and hope you're staying safe the Yazidis have a very unique structure in their faith. They have a monotheistic faith with a belief in a supreme being, similar to Freemasonry, who is the creator and placed the responsibility of this world onto the seven holy angels, those being Archangel uh, Gabriel, Michael, Azrael, same how it is in the other monotheistic point of views. Now the, the difference that they have is that the leader of those angels and one with the authority of the world is Malik Taos, the peacock angel. Now, uh, the Yazidis are mainly dispersed in Iraq, Syria, the Levant area, and the di and some of the diaspora that has immigrated to Western countries as refugees due to uh, recent world events within the last 10 years or so. Now, the Yazidis um, believe that God has a thousand and one names uh, it's similar to in um, Islam how we have 99 names of God. And uh, they believe that Almighty God has created the world, but left its affairs to the uh, angels, like the seven holy angels, with Malik Taos being the, uh, let's say, the gateway between this world and Almighty God. So he's basically the caretaker of this world. Now, uh, the reason why people hate on the Yazidis is that uh, because of the story of Malik Taos and how it's similar to um, the pride of, uh, let's say, Iblis uh, in Islam, who in the Christianity is known as Lucifer, that refused to bow down before the first human. So Malik Taos refused to bow down before the first human when God ordered the seven angels to do so. So in the eyes of the Yazidi, the command was basically a test because God is all-knowing and all-powerful. And Malik Tao said that, I will only bow before the Supreme Creator and no one else. So this, the test that basically Malik Tao was put through is that he basically being cast down or the fall of man. Malik Tao, when he was cast down as the fallen one, then he he cried um, for 7,000 years until his tears quenched the fires of hell. And that's when that order out of chaos occurred for Malik Taos. And that's when God appointed him as the uh, the figurehead of this world. So basic and, and left its affairs of this world to Malik Taos. So the thing is that Almighty God always knows what's going to happen in the past, in the present, and in the future. God could have made him submit to Adam, but gave Malik Taos the choice to test him. And Almighty God had already directed him to not bow to any other being. And this was the, um, I guess, the story in their analogy that they put out, where they get uh, labeled as devil worshippers, but... They don't realize in a lot of these stories is even when man, man, ha, um, you know, makes punishments, they, he has to go through either purgatory or in Islam, he also ha has to go through a punishment before he's allowed to go into heaven. So 
Malik Taos, or the story of Malik Taos, you could say, is teaching us that we have to go through the choices of good and evil in our life. You do have order out of chaos, and you need to find that balance. Because once you find that balance, that's when you get, well, that's when you can get close to God. So Malik Taos crying for seven thousand years, and uh, I guess uh, recovering from his uh, mistake or his test, you could say made him closer to the Almighty and uh, made him that benefactor of the leader of those angels such as Gabriel, Michael, Ezrael to lead humanity and to be that benefactor between humanity and God. So uh, I guess the misperception that people gave them as devil worshippers is incorrect because you know unfortunately in today's world even with all the information we have present, you do have a lack of education. And people often con you know, condemn what they do not understand. And that's why I always tell people, don't let movies, books, um, different perceptions or word of mouth, anything shape your opinion about somebody. Go and get to know them yourself. Sit down with them. Have a coffee or break bread with them. That's the only way you're going to learn about who they are, what they do. And you realize that they have the same hopes and dreams, heartbreaks, tears, laughter, um, wishes for their family, for their children, just like you do. And we let, you know, things that we've been branded with as since we were kids divide us, not knowing that all these paths are all just walking us home. And that's that's the love that we need for each other. This is the volume of the sacred law of the Yazidis, which is uh, known as the Book of Revelation, or known as the Black Book. Now, similar to Freemasonry, their tradition is always passed down orally, or one who becomes a master of his craft or the master of the work. So they have that same tradition where they take their traditions very seriously, and um, not too much is known to the outside world about how they... Uh, how they do things so the Yazidis they believe that the world uh, you know in reference to my previous slide was created by the Almighty Most High and he entrusted it to the seven angels and the head of those angels being Malik Taos Malik Taos is the primary uh, head of the Yazidi belief and he filled the earth with flora light love and the religion basically is a monotheistic religion. They believe in a supreme brain, in a being, and they do have, and they also believe in the concepts that people have the aspects of good and evil inside of them, and then it's, it's their free will to decide how they're going to live their life and the consequences that come thereafter. Similar to Freemasonry, is that it's everything is about free will. No one can force you to do anything how you want to live your life and the consequences that come with it those are yours to bear and um, but they also believe just like in masonry you, the, you know the mason chips away at his rough ashlar so too the Yazidis they have a system where they believe in internal purification or the transmigration of your soul and uh, they also believe that these angels come back in human form to guide humanity at times when humanity needs guidance the most <clears throat> another um, thing about them is that well one of their uh, sheikhs uh, was a Sufi preacher so they have that connection with Islam so Sheikh um, Adi Ibn Musafir he was a Sufi preacher from Iraq and uh, they believed him to be the uh, I guess the physical reincarnation of Malik Taos and they revered him, his aesthetic lifestyle and miracles and prayers that he performed for the people. So, as a Muslim, I already have a connection with the Yazidis as a Sufi Muslim because one of the Sufi preachers is regarded as an important figure in their faith. So that alone should be that bridge between us. And that's my job to uh, make sure that the agents of chaos who spread hate and that exist inside every race, religion, group in the world, their agendas fail because my job is to make sure that I leave love and happiness and uh, the right to a uh, dignified existence for every being on this, on this world.
there is a choice between good and evil and even the ones that that uh, say that they're religious they often fall to the evil side so don't go by somebody that tells you that I'm religious and this person's a devil worshiper you gotta look into their heart see what that person's about and find what you have in common with them and that's that's the unity that will unite us as we try to leave a better world especially in times like this where we see that all those people that talked and said they were this or that how are they helping humanity right now who's helping humanity right now are the lovers the healers those that prayed for each other those are the most important people we had not those that spread hate or disunity and I'm glad that the veils are being lifted and humanity is um, seeing through all of that illusion now I would say that if we can follow these examples then I will be very happy if I can witness that within my lifetime here are some quick facts about the Yazidis so they're a religious sect found in northern Iraq Syria and the Caucasus their religion incorporates elements of many faiths including Zoroastrianism so there we have it how they incorporate um, different aspects of the faith similar how to how Freemasonry is where it has something from each faith that makes it whole and everyone can feel a personal connection to it through its traditions and values they believe that the world was created by a supreme being who entrusted it to seven angels the chief of whom is Malik Taos the peacock angel and uh, their population is around half a million mostly most of them were in Iraq but um, since the events of the last 10 years a, most, a lot of their diaspora has settled as refugees in um, different parts of the Western world as well through uh, different uh, relief programs that the governments and uh, the NGOs have offered them just like how in Freemasonry you have the double-headed eagle the balance of uh, Yazidism is also the same way as well because they believe that in order for you to be whole you must be balanced and you must be able to incorporate both of those um, elements of dark and light within you in order to become whole so and also their uh, incorporation of the elements of all of the faiths Islam Christianity Judaism Zoroastrianism and other ancient Iranian religions make them similar to Freemasonry as well with um, how the aspect of getting close to God to balance that light and dark within yourself to come to that self-realization and to have aspects where you're mastering all religions and cultures of the world because the true Mason is the one who incorporates all elements of the different religions and applies that to his own own learning and own growth they have a structure similar to Sufism where you have Murids uh, basically they're the uh, disciples or the uh, I guess the students the peers and the sheikhs who are equivalent of let's say the master the master of the lodge so the peers and sheikhs are the masters and the murids are the you know the brothers under them and uh, other groups which regulate religious law and order so you know similar to Freemasonry where you everyone has their own respective jurisdiction with their own laws with their own system it's uh, it's all relative and they are trying to maintain their traditions get close to God and honor their communities and place in the world so it's uh, as you see it's all one and the same with the path of Freemasonry and those that are in the Yazidi faith that you know it's similar to all of the other videos that I've made about all of the religions and how they relate to the brotherhood is that we're basically walking each other home and the more we bridge these gaps between each other the more we we become united as mankind and that's my goal and I pray that within my lifetime I don't want no fame I don't want no fortune I don't want nothing all I ask Almighty God is how Solomon asked um, God for wisdom all I will ask is please Put a tube and shield of light and protection around humanity and just make everything go good for everyone. That would be my greatest wealth if I could leave a world like that behind.
Now, if you look at history, the ancient uh, Iranian Persian people and the ancient people of Hindustan, now known as India, have uh, often shared a very um, powerful link with each other at a time where there were no borders or um, regulations like that exist today that keep people divided. Now, you see the Yazidi temple entry in Lalish, Iraq. There's the symbol of the snake. Now, most people, unfortunately, um, equate the snake or the serpent to uh, evil, but the snake is actually wisdom, or, the, you know, the serpent is actually wisdom. And how you see on the uh, medical insignias, there's always two snakes coiling up, so that represents healing and wisdom. Same with the pharaoh. You have the, uh, the serpent that comes out of his crown, which is his third eye chakra. Because it's the kundalini that coils up and coils up like a serpent to go deliver that energy from your bottom to the top. And that's why they say that for your physical temple, which is the body, you must protect your energies. You must not deplete your fluids in any way. And that's why a lot of the uh, religious figures teach you all that similar fa path is that uh, protect yourself, hone your energies, hone your internal fluids and you will be able to uh, basically spin that wheel of enlightenment within yourself. So as you see um, how I was saying about the similarity that they have with the uh, Hinduism structure, is you see the serpent on the temple, and then on the right-hand side you have Lord Subramanya Muragan, who's, uh, who has the serpents guarding him, and also similar with uh, King Mukalinda, for the Siddhartha Gautama Buddha who, go, who guarded the Buddha when there was a rainstorm in the forest. So just like how you have good and bad uh, human beings, there's the same concept with the reptilians too. Like reptilians, yeah, you have good and bad. Humans, you have good and bad. So we must be able to seek through those deceptions and know that not everyone is bad just because someone said, said it. So make the effort to discover that on your own through education and awareness. This is the tomb of uh, Sheikh Adi, the Sufi preacher who, who the Yazidis believed was the physical reincarnation of Malik Taos. Now, in response to my previous slide, uh, the similarities between the ancient Iranian faiths, which Yazidis descend from, and Hinduism, you see how they also had the serpent on the temple Plus, their, uh, the top of their temples are also structured the same way that Hindu temples are. So I believe that the link between um, ancient Hindustan and ancient Persia uh, and the Iranian faiths and how they interacted with each other, including the modern-day descendants known as the Yazidis, there's still an unknown link that hasn't been proven yet or there hasn't been any uh, relevant information to connect them. But I, uh, if you just look at these structures and how they share that similarities you know they had some kind of interaction with each other which hopefully um, down the road as uh, things start opening up more we, we can know what was that connection that they shared with each other now Sheikh Adi was a Sufi master and preacher and he had journeyed to Mecca he became a teacher he chose an aesthetic way of life because uh, the Sufi master is the one who renounces uh, anything material in this world because they believe that only thing that that there is is God and God only and you came from that source and that's all you came back to you're not going to take no titles money degrees possessions you can't you come from that source to have this worldly experience and you go right back into it now excuse me uh, Sheikh Adi uh, left Baghdad and settled in Lelish uh, he, he wanted seclusion, but uh, the local population loved him so much because of his aestheticism and miracles. He became basically like a local celebrity, and everyone was flocking to be with him, to be close to him in the Valley of Lalish. And as time went on, he founded um, an Adiwaya order, if I'm saying that correctly. And he started, uh, he didn't have any descendants, so he didn't marry or... He didn't um, have any kids, but he wanted to make sure that he was able to leave a positive influence behind. And before his passing from this world, he assigned his nephew, Sakar Abu al-Barakat, 
as his successor to lead the Yazidi community after his passing. So this is like one of the holiest sites and it's like I said before, this alone should be that bridge between um, Islam and uh, the Yazidi faith and I tell my Yazidi brothers and sisters that I extend that uh, you know um, olive branch to you and know that and tell you that you have the right to exist and anybody that persecutes you in any way is not a real Muslim and I'm here to stand up for you as a Muslim Mason whose job is to spread light and to uplift the fallen state of humanity and uh, that's that's my job and I will continue to do that for as long as I'm physically able to do so this is a, um, a Yazidi priest and as you see it's uh, if, if I were to see him for the first time I would think he's an Imam which is a, a Muslim um, a preacher so there it is again is that it we're all the same and we see all of these things and appearances and judgments and preconceived notions get the best of us and it's um, our duty in the world of information that exists now to not be ignorant we have no excuse in today's world to be ignorant you basically everyone's carrying encyclopedias in their hands whether it's tablets or phones or laptops at any given moment you can get online and read and watch to your heart content whatever you so desire and whatever you want to study free of charge and we owe it to each other to learn about each other and not to fall into that preconceived notion of what some tradition or some book or somebody told you about oh th this is how these people are this is what you got to watch out for you got to make the effort to self-realize and learn about each other because we're all walking each other home and we owe that love to each other. And I tell people that there's always a spiritual price to pay for our actions and inactions in this world and the next. So please, you know, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, I got love for all of you. Please make the correct decision so we can leave a better world behind. As we see now that all the years of people hating on each other and spending money on war and weaponry, what did that get us today? when the entire world is falling short on medical equipment and healing equipment. Imagine if all those years we were spending money on those things, we wouldn't be facing the situation we are today. And this is a learning moment for us, is that it's never too late. Once the storm settles and the storm goes away and the sun rises again, then let us pick up the pieces and build a better world behind for everyone's benefit, no matter who you are or what you believe in. I thank you all for watching. Uh, if any questions or comments, please email me at salmonshake911 at gmail.com. All images and thumbnails used in this presentation were retrieved from public search domains and protected under copyright laws of fair use, education purpose. My videos are always for education and nonprofit. Thank you. Stay safe. Life is beautiful and may we have a world soon where all respect each other and make the effort to learn from each other. My love to all of you. Please, again, stay safe and use this time to heal your relationships with yourself and your loved ones. Take care.